HTC are back. And in this video, I'm going to give you the full lowdown on their new PC VR headset. So I had the pleasure of talking to HTC last week and they showed off their new Vive Focus Vision. Now this headset has DNA with the Vive Focus 3, which is their commercial prosumer grade VR headset used for training. Now you may not realize this, but HTC have been in the commercial space for quite some time and being very successful at it as well, including firefighter training, market and design, so things like building engines and cars, that kind of thing, therapy and rehabilitation, learning education, pilot training, and if any of you have been at air shows recently, especially uh, the Royal International Air Tattoo, you will see a whole floor which they was using the Vive Focus 3 to showcase many different experiences, including ground operations and flight simulators. But also the Vive Focus 3 is used for the police service as well. Pretty amazing stuff, I think you'll agree. But why am I telling you this? Well, it's simply because the new Vision series is exactly the same headset as their Vive Focus 3 commercial grade headset. It hasn't been downgraded in any way, which is both a blessing and a curse, which I'll explain in a moment, because this headset is going to have a DisplayPort connection. That means you're going to get beautiful, rich PC VR visuals without any compression, without any artifacts, and let me tell you, I know the Quest 3 is a fantastic headset and we, you know, many people use it, but you cannot beat a DisplayPort connection headset when it comes to flight simulators and race sims and, you know, real full fat PC VR experiences. There is just definitely a big difference. Not only that, it is actually easier for your GPU to handle a DisplayPort connection than having to deal with lots of encoding. So anyway, let's just now go through the specification keeping in mind that this has the exact same specification as their flagship Focus 3. This headset has built-in eye tracking and motorized IPD adjustment. Pretty damn cool. Now in terms of the chipset, because I haven't really mentioned this yet because it's not really applicable to the channel, but it can do standalone gaming as well because it has an XR2 chipset. It's not the new XR2 Gen 2 chipset. However, I don't really mind about that because all that chip really is essentially doing is powering the tracking because you don't need external base stations for this. It has its own tracking built in. I'm totally fine with that, but if you really so desire, you can play probably Beat Saber or any standalone games. But as I say, that's an area that I'm not really so concerned about because this channel is all about PC VR flight simulation and I'm pretty confident that 99% of the people watching this is more excited for the specification using it as a display port PC VR headset but you can use it as a standalone device it does have a battery but here's the thing unlike the Pimax Crystal that battery won't wear down over a long session. You can pull an all-nighter on this thing and it will always remain charged. That's really important. And even if you do use it as a standalone headset, it has a 15-minute internal battery, so you can hot-swap the battery if you so desire. So perhaps in the future there could be a market for a wireless solution for those who really do still enjoy flying, you know, with a wireless uh, PC VR experience because I know there's many out there that don't like a wire. This gives you the option to do both. Now before I do move on and talk about the hardware specs, I think it's also worth noting that this Android software solution that they're using for the Vive Vision XR, well it's a lot more open unlike the closed platforms of the Apple Vision Pro and the Meta software which essentially means you've got a lot more power, a lot more customization, and more flexibility. Much like an Android phone where you can, you know, download different software and it will allow you to do that compared to, say, an Apple device. So let's now talk about the pass-through, which 
In this day and age, mixed reality is a must with any new VR headset moving forward. And the Vive Focus Vision XR, which is the full name, I must keep saying that, <laughs> has dual 16 megapixel color cameras with a depth sensor and an infrared sensor as well for enhanced tracking in low light conditions. That's quite high and I'm really intrigued to see how that compares to the Somnium VR1 and the Pico 4 Ultra Edition because dual 16 megapixel cameras, depending on the sensor, that is pretty decent and that should be a lot better than say the Quest 3. So in terms of the resolution, it is a combined 5K resolution across both eyes and it is an LCD panel. It doesn't have any backlighting, so it's not mini LED, it's not QLED either. So that is one area that is a shame because you won't get local dimming with this headset. Oh, so annoying, but never mind. In essence, this is the same panel as the Vi Pro 2. And things don't really get any better when we talk about the lenses, which are for now. And if they're anything like the Vi Pro 2, there is a small sweet spot, unfortunately. If you're in it, you're absolutely fine, but things can get blurry pretty damn quick. So that is a great shame. And I really wish they just moved to pancake lenses, as Fresnel lenses in 2024 for me just doesn't make much sense. So with this form factor, as you can see, it looks like a super sleek, super comfortable headset too. And it does have active cooling, something that I do moan about quite a lot because I think it's really important to be nice and cool in VR. Now in terms of the PPD, that is the pixels per degree, well the display itself is 5K combined resolution, as you know, but I'm not quite sure what the pixels per degree is at the moment. The field of view is about 120 degrees, or claimed anyway, and it will run at 90 hertz with the option of 120 hertz as well. In terms of the software, they have said that they will be a desktop mirror and you can sort of open up Windows, which is very, very cool. I also asked about OpenXR and they do have their own integration now, which is fantastic. I'm really glad about that and hopefully their motion reprojection will work really well with that as well. Of course, it also has full Steam VR support. And in terms of the camera tracking, I believe there is four cameras. So it'll be interesting to see what the tracking is like. But I've got a feeling for our use case scenario, that is sitting down, chilling, flight simming, or perhaps even in DCS World where you are moving your head quite a bit, I reckon it'll be just fine. And before I forget, it does come with its own controllers, which look very sleek, very modern. I think we've come a long way from the Vive Ones of the day. <laughs> and also in terms of hand tracking, this is really clever because it has an infrared sensor that actually enhances the hand tracking in low light conditions. So really it has all bases covered. A very fully specced, very nice PC VR headset and I have to say I think it looks absolutely superb. It does look very comfortable and I'm glad to say I will be getting hands on with it very soon. Now just to say sorry about the B-roll, um, HTC didn't really provide me with a lot of content so I'm just having to improvise a little bit and uh, I hope you're enjoying this Ryanair flight uh, out of uh, Milan heading to East Midlands <laughs> uh, a few weeks ago. Oh actually before I forget as well, there is audio, there is large speakers hidden inside of the strap and it has a full loudness mode and even a privacy mode as well so that others can't hear you nearby. So what do I really think about the Vive Pro Vision XR? I just feel that HTC nearly nailed it but unfortunately there is a few areas which I'm very concerned about, particularly and more than the LCD panel is those lenses because as I say in 2024 we really need pancake lenses to be a norm now it's just something that every headset should have and going back to Fresnel lenses I just you know even with the PSVR 2 it reminds me how blurry they can be and how frustrating they can be but apart from that it actually looks like a very very nice headset 
and I really am looking forward to trying it on the channel so I can give you my honest opinion and to see if this could be a really good mid-range flight simming headset. So how much is this going to set you back? This is going on sale for 999 British pounds. So you can pre-order this. However, keep in mind that the DisplayPort cable won't be included on the full release. But if you pre-order it now, although I would suggest that you wait for my review, you will get a bundle deal, which will include free games and the Vive Wire streaming kit, which is basically the DisplayPort at no additional cost. I think that's probably a saving of around £300. Now, my personal opinion is, if the headset would have been £999, but it had pancake lenses and a QLED or perhaps a mini LED panel with local dimming, then I would be telling you right now that I'm super excited for this headset and I feel this could be a very strong contender. But unfortunately, with the advent of Fresnel lenses becoming a thing again in 2024, I just can't feel as excited as I really want to be. Now, please do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you tempted to pre-order this headset? This could still be a replacement from your Reverb G2 especially if you're not really wanting to go the Pimax route. I will say that the form factor is definitely tempting in a sea of headsets which are just getting bigger and bigger by the day. But it's one thing for certain, it's great to see that HTC are acknowledging the PC VR crowd again and I do wish them well on this venture. Take care and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye for now.